Hello and welcome to this video on circle theorems. Now, now just as we had various angle laws to do with parallel lines such as alternate angles and corresponding angles, we also have various angle laws to do with lines interacting with circles. Now let's go through the various circle theorems that you need to know. Let's suppose that's the centre of the circle and we have two lines to the circumference of the circle and then we join these points up to the circumference like that. So we get this almost like Star Trek logo type shape like this. And we've got an angle at the centre of the circle and we've got an angle at the circumference of the circle. Now this angle here at the centre of the circle is double the angle at the circumference of the circle. So if this was say x then that would be an angle of 2x. So just to give an example, circle here and then I had an angle to the centre and then an angle to the circumference. If this angle here was say 30 degrees, then this angle at the center would be double, which would be 60 degrees. So let's write down that circle theorem. The angle at the center of the circle is double the angle at the circumference. And always check that one of those angles is at the center of the circle and one of the angles is at the circumference of the circle. Just a reminder, the circumference of the circle is the edge of the circle. Now the next, now the next circle theorem involves the diameter of the circle. So let's say this is the diameter. It goes through the center of the circle. Then if we have any angle in that semicircle, then that angle at the circumference will always be 90 degrees. You can sort of see that's 90 degrees, but any angle you had, it could be say to here, that will always be 90 degrees. So the circle theorem is angle in a semicircle, because look, this is a semicircle here, is 90 degrees. Next one, if we have a tangent to the circle, and a reminder that a line that touches the circle is known as a tangent, and we have a radius attached to that tangent, so this joins the centre of the circle, then that angle between the radius and the tangent is 90 degrees. So the angle between the radius and the tangent is 90 degrees. And make sure that when you're required to give a reason that you quote that word for word. The next circle theorem, let's say that we drew a chord in the circle. And do remember that the region either side of that chord is known as a segment. So this is known as a minor segment, this is known as the major segment. And I do have a video which talks about the different parts of a circle. Now, if you fire from the two ends of that chord into the segment, say into the major segment here, that is known as the angle in the segment. And basically, wherever we have an angle in the segment, so if we fire from the two ends of the chord to another point in that segment, then the angle will always be the same. I could fire to here and the angle will always be the same. And we say that angles in same segment are equal. And the way I often get students to remember this one is to think of a kind of butterfly shape. So if I had a kind of butterfly kind of bow tie type shape like this, so the angles at one end are going to be the same and the angles at the other end would also be the same. The next one, if I have the centre of the circle again and I have two radii like this, now because we know the radius of a given circle is always going to stay fixed, those two lengths are the same and that means that this triangle here is isosceles. That means these two angles are the same. And that's not really a circle theorem as such. We can actually quote the angle law to do with isosceles triangles and say that base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. Next circle theorem. Let's say I was to have some quadrilateral where all four corners, all four vertices of the quadrilateral were on the circumference of the circle. This is then known as a cyclic quadrilateral and it's only a cyclic quadrilateral, sometimes said cyclic quadrilateral, if all four corners are on the circumference of the circle. And the circle theorem to do with this is that if you have opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral, they add to 180. They're not equal necessarily, but they add to 180. So if that was say x, then that angle there would be 180 minus it, 180 minus x. So the circle theorem here is opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add to 
180 degrees. Don't say are 180 degrees because that angle and that angle aren't 180 degrees. It's that they add to 180 degrees. And another way of saying it is to say the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. And what supplementary means is that they add up to 180. We've got just a few more. Now if I had two tangents to the circle like this from a particular point to the circle, then those tangents are equal in length. You can sort of just about see it by symmetry that they're going to be the same length. So if I write the reason, I write tangents from a point to the circle are equal in length. And then the very last one, I had one circle too many here. If I have a tangent here and I also have a chord attached to that tangent, then again I form a segment area here. That's a segment here and that's also a segment, an area either side of the chord. Now if I fire from the chord into the segment like this, as I did with this earlier circle theorem here, then that angle in the segment is the same as the angle between the chord and the tangent. So I sometimes like to think of it as a kind of like laser platform rising up from the ground. So you've got the cord rising up from the tangent here and that angle that your laser platform rises up is the same as the angle when you fire from the two ends of the laser platform to some point to the circumference of the circle. And this is known as the alternate segment theorem. You don't need to give any description, you just need to state it as the alternate segment theorem. And this region here is known as the alternate segment because it's a segment on the other side of the chord from the tangent. Now there's actually two more circle theorems, but they're not in the main GCC syllabus and therefore I won't be exploring them in this video. I should also point out that I'm not going to prove any of these circle theorems and you can find such proofs in my slides. So let's do a whole bunch of examples. We want to determine the angle X and or Y. So we've got this first diagram here. Now what have we got? We've got an angle at the centre of the circle, x, and we've got an angle at the circumference of the circle. That's just an application of this first circle theorem. So we know that the angle at the centre of the circle is double the angle at the circumference of the circle. So if that angle at the circumference is 20, the angle at the centre will be double that, which is 40 degrees. What about the second one? Now, this looks very different to this construction here. We've got the lines actually crossing over each other. But the thing is, we still have an angle at the centre of the circle and the other angle at the circumference of the circle. So it's still the case that that angle at the centre is double the angle at the circumference. So that angle at the circumference must be half the angle at the centre. So half of 80 degrees we've got there would be 40 degrees again. If I draw it, it might become clear. This is the kind of construction, the easy construction, that we saw in this first diagram here. But just as we could fire towards this point of circumference, we could fire to, say, a different point on circumference, like here, and we can see that then that line crosses that line, and we get the construction that we saw in here. What about the third one? Now, this is the diameter of the circle because it goes through the centre of the circle. So what circle theorem matches? Well, it's this one here. We've got an angle in a semicircle, this is a semicircle here, so that angle in a semicircle must be 90 degrees. So x is 90 degrees. What about the fourth one? Well, we have this kind of butterfly or bow tie type shape, and we know that's the one angles in the same segment are equal. So as I said before, the angles at the same end of the bow tie, the butterfly, are going to be the same. So that x is going to match that 50 there. So x in this case is the 50 degrees, not that 20 degrees over there. Don't get mixed up with alternate angles, because if these lines were parallel, then that would be a z, and therefore that x would be equal to that 20. But those lines aren't parallel, so we can't use that particular angle theorem. What about question 5? Well, we've got a tangent here attached to a radius, and therefore that angle of x must be 90 degrees. And often the exam question, by the way, they would ask you to quote what circle theorems you use, and then you would just write exactly what you have in this diagram here. What about question six? Now, I've got two angles that I need to find, so I'm just going to quickly copy out the diagram again. 
Now, this angle is 100 here. Now, notice this is a cyclic quadrilateral because all four points of this quadrilateral lie in the circumference of the circle. And we know that opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add to 180. So if this angle here is 100, then the opposite angle over here would be 80. This quadrilateral, by the way, is not a cyclic quadrilateral because one of the vertices doesn't lie on the circumference of the circle. That's the centre of the circle. But now we can use this circle theorem here. We've got the angle at the centre is double the angle at the circumference. If that's 80, then that angle is 160 degrees. So that's the answer. We've got x there is equal to 80, and we've got the y is equal to 160. Now question 7. We've got a tangent, and we've got two chords attached to that tangent. And that's where we can use the alternate second theorem. Now, do you remember I said that we could fire from the two ends of the chord to the circumference of the circle? So we can see the x there being fired to, and that's the same as the angle between the chord and the tangent. So it's going to be equal to the 50 degrees there. So x in this particular case is 50 degrees. It's not equal to the 80 over there. Because if we want to use that 80, well, the angle between the tangent and this chord that the 80 is on, if we then fire from that, we get to this point of circumference. So that angle there would be 80 degrees. Now, what about 8? I'd better draw this one because we've got lots of angles to fill in. We've got two tangents, and this is 70, and we want to find the angle over here. Now, firstly, note that we've got a tangent and a radius, because this is the centre of the circle, so that's 90. That angle is similarly also 90. Now, this here is a quadrilateral. It's not a cyclic quadrilateral, because that point is the centre, which is not on the circumference, and that point is also not on the circumference, so it's not a cyclic quadrilateral, but it is just a quadrilateral. So we know that the angles add to 360. So the 70 plus the 90 plus the 90 comes to 250 degrees. So if we subtract that from 360 degrees, we get that this is 110. So now these four angles add up to 360 degrees. And then we can see angle at the centre is double the angle at the circumference. So that angle is double this angle, which is 55 degrees. Now we've got a few harder circle theorem problems here where we're going to use multiple different circle theorems. Now we need to find x. Now notice first that this is a cyclic quadrilateral, all four of these points on the circumference of the circle, and therefore opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So opposite to that is this angle here, so that angle is 70 degrees, so they add up to 180. Also notice that this is the diameter of the circle. So the angle in the semicircle, if we follow the two ends of the diameter to the circumference, they meet here, so that angle there would be 90 degrees. Now, this is just a triangle, and the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. That's 70, that's 90, so the remaining angle must be 20 degrees, so they add up to 180. What about 10? Now, we want to find x. We've got a tangent here and some chords, so we're probably going to be able to use the alternate segment theorem. First, notice that we have a cyclic quadrilateral here because all four points on the circumference of the circle. So that's 80. That must be 100 degrees there, so they add up to 180. Now, we've got two angles in this triangle here. One is 100, one is 20, so the final angle must be 60 degrees. And then let's try and use the alternate segment theorem. If this angle here is x between the tangent and the chord, then we fire from the two ends of the chord onto the circumference. We can see that they meet at the circumference here, so that angle 60 there must match that angle x there. So x must be equal to 60 degrees. What about 11? Well, these two lines are both the radius of the circle, so they must be the same length. And therefore, this is an isosceles triangle, so that angle there, the other base angle, must also be 50 degrees. And these three angles add up to 180. They add up to 100, so the last one is 80 degrees. And then the angle at the centre of the circle is double the angle at the circumference. So if that's 80, that must be equal to 40 degrees. What about question 12? Now, we've got a radius here attached to a tangent, so that must be 90 degrees, which means this final angle in this triangle here would be equal to 60 degrees, so they add up to 180. 
And then, well, this is a straight line. Angles on a straight line around a particular point add up to 180 degrees. So if that's 60, that must be 120 degrees. And then just like with this diagram, we've got two radii of the circle here. So that length must be equal to that length, which means this is an isosceles triangle. Now that's 120, the other two angles must add up to 60 degrees. And, that, and if we divide that equally into two, that means that x has got to be equal to 30 degrees. What well, about 13? We've got an algebraic one this time. It's similar to the diagram we had before, but we've got algebraic angles. We want to find y in terms of x. Now, if that angle there at the centre of the circle is x, then the angle circumference of the circle must be half of that, so we could write half x, or you could also write x over t. Now, we also know that this is a cyclic quadrilateral because all four points are on the circumference of the circle. And that means that opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So that means the half x plus the y is equal to 180 degrees. And we want y in terms of x, so we just need to get y on its own. Well, we're adding half x to it, so if we subtract half x from each side, we got y is 180 degrees minus half x, and that is the answer. And the final one, which is a bit more difficult than all the others, the first thing to think is, like, what information have they given you in the question? Well, this line here is a tangent to the circle, so, there's some, so there must be some tangent-related circle theorem we used. And also, this line here goes through the centre of the circle, so this is a diameter, so there must be some diameter-related circle theorem we could use. Now, there's two different ways to do it. One way you could do it is to add a line like this. Now the reason I've done that is because we can then use the only circle theorem to do with diameter of the circle, which is that the angle in a semicircle, because this is now a semicircle, is 90 degrees. So that angle is 90 degrees, which means this final angle in this triangle here must be 60 degrees. Now also we've got this tangent here. So what tangent related circle theorem do we know? Well we've got an angle between the chord here and the tangent, this one here. And you remember that we could fire from the two ends of the chord to the circumference which we get to here. So this angle here must also be 30 degrees by the alternate segment theorem. Now we've got pretty much everything we need here. Because if that angle is 60 there, we know this other angle in this straight line here must be 120 because angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. And then we can just subtract these two angles from 180 because these three angles in a triangle must sum to 180 degrees. So that would mean that x is just equal to 180 minus 30 minus 120, which is equal to... 30 degrees. So x is equal to 30 degrees. And that means that this entire triangle, in fact, is isosceles because these are both 30 degrees.